Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Miriam Dow, wife, mama for real estate investor, and entrepreneur. Yes, the braces is back, temporary, very temporary. So this video is about how I feel Airbnb robbed me. Point blank, period. Let's get right into it. So this past summer, um, basically I've been an Airbnb host going on, I started September of 2021. So this past September, I hit two years of being an Airbnb host, right? And the entire two years, I've never canceled on a guest, never canceled on a guest. I have a home that's dedicated for the guest. I've never had any issues where I had to cancel the reservation. But two situations happened this past summer, right? And I feel like all these situationships happen when I'm out of the country. And of course, I don't have a big team. So if it's me handling all these issues as they occur. So the first problem was um, a guest checked in to my one bedroom unit in my duplex and they said that there was no electricity. So I'm like, huh, what's you talking about? The cleaner was there hours before this. No, the cleaner was there the previous day and she cleaned and she didn't tell me anything about any electricity. She sent me the video of the house, but this guest comes and they come around like 9 p.m. and she's telling me that there's no electricity. No, they didn't come that late. They probably came like around 5 p.m. But she says that there's electricity in the entry area. Um, she said some of the TVs are on, like the bedroom TV was on, but the fridge wasn't working. Some things were on, like some lights were on, but a lot of the things wasn't working for the most part. So I give her access to the basement to go there. She goes and she resets the panels and still nothing. So I apologize. I call my sister at the time, right? Because this is a house that I'm partnered up with with my sister. I'm literally on the plane. <laughs> I'm on a plane in Senegal. Um, I was supposed to return from Mali um, for working for my foundation October. I think I was supposed to return October 14th. And then something happened where all of um, Air France canceled their flights going to and from Mali because of this political issue that they had going on. So we had to buy flights with a totally different company from Mali that wasn't leaving until three, four days later to Senegal and then from Senegal we can then resume and take Air France to Paris and then to the US. So it was a shit show. Um I would have been back in the country had it not been this and I would have been able to take care of take care of the situation. But this happened. The guest is telling me that there's no electricity. They're sending me pictures. There's literally no lights. Um and I call my sister. She's in Mexico. So she's saying that she doesn't have any connection to make any outgoing calls. Now, every time I travel, I make sure to get the global plan so that I can make my international calls as need be. And I was literally on the flight. The flight is boarding. There's no way I can call PAC and G to see what's going on. There's no way. I messaged my hand to me, but then I was like, you know what? This is going to be too much of a headache. By the time this guest gets back to me, I'm going to be in the air. It's gonna, it's a seven-hour flight to Paris. It, I can't. I can't. I just can't, right? And that was so stressful. Um, so I just told them, you know what? Please just cancel the reservation. I'll refund you your entire amount. I'm actually on a plane right now. You know, I was honest. There's nothing that I can do. I don't know what's going on. Home was fine yesterday. I'm just going to have to give you a full refund. I apologize. I'm so sorry. So she cancels. And then when they cancel, they get a, they get penalized because the guest gets to keep a portion of it. Um, and I know that if I cancel, as the host cancels, I heard that you get penalized, but I've never experienced it. So I told her to cancel, but then she goes and calls Airbnb. Um, and she tells them that I was the one that told her to cancel. So what they did was it said canceled by Airbnb instead of canceled by guests. And then I refunded her the full amount. So when I refunded her the full amount that Airbnb was supposed to pay me, that wasn't the full amount that she paid. So for instance, let's say she was supposed she paid three hundred dollars in total, and out of that three hundred, one hundred and ninety dollars was coming to me. I refunded her the whole one ninety, but she was like, "Hey, Miriam, this amount that you're refunding me is not the full amount. I paid three hundred. I'm like, well, those extra fees and stuff didn't come to me. You have to call Airbnb. So that's why she called Airbnb. They canceled it, but then. I get into the country and then I see like a few days later that they're charging me $90 cancellation fee, right? Can cancellation penalty fee. So I call Airbnb. I'm like, what's going on? Why are you guys charging me $90? And they're like, because you canceled this and you need to show proof of any issue. So by then, I had already called PSCNG. I was going back and forth, back and forth. I'm jet lagged. I'm so tired. But I was going back and forth with, with PSCNG. Um, they were telling me that first I, hi I had my electrician go take a look. He went to take a look. He said that there's nothing that he can do because the box that he needs to access is locked by PSCNG, also known as Con Edison if you live in New York. So that box, that electrical panel that he needs to access is locked by them and they have to come out. So I had to call them. And then the person that I keep getting on the phone, it's like an emergency line. And then someone calls me back by like a block number. I guess the guy's in charge of 
sending his people out to houses depending on how bad the emergency is and i'm like hey there's no electricity in my home i'm not sure what's going on like my base my bills is paid some things are on some things are not on so once i said that like the some things are on and some things are not on he said oh well that has nothing to do with us you have to call an electrician and the electrician kept telling me to call him so this is going on for two three days finally he sent someone out um, he's like, oh, I spoke to my supervisor. I don't think there's anything that we can do. But finally, he sends someone out. The person goes in. I give them the lockbox codes. I give them the codes to get to the house. And they were able to fix the situation in minutes. So I'm like, I've been going back and forth. Call psa and right? The lady reserves it as an emergency. Then I wait for him to call me back. And this is going on throughout the weekend. And it's like, this could have been handled days ago. It's so annoying because it's like, I don't really know what the real problem is. And I call my electrician and I paid him $100 just to come to tell me what the problem was. So I'm spending money where I didn't have to spend money. So he went just to tell me that this is a problem and that I need to have PSNG come out because he can't access the box. If they open the box, he can handle it. Where basically, as you guys know, when I bought this property, it was, it was a single family that they were turning into a duplex, right? They were in the process. They had permits. So we were able to finish it, and it is now a legal duplex. But in the meantime, remember, I had to put uh, uh, two meters in there, so two additional meters. So it's a total of three meters, one for the first floor unit, one for the second floor unit, and then a third unit because when you first walk into my duplex, there's a little foyer, and the owner, me, I'm responsible for the light in that area. So I'm responsible for any, you know, the bills and stuff like that in that little front foyer, um, so it can't be connected to any of the tenants meters that will be connected to my sole meter. So he said that they started using these smart meters where sometimes it's giving them problems where sometimes, um, PSENG is feeding the, the, the meter power, but sometimes it just disconnects and it stops reading or getting the power. So he had to just come and press a button or something and started feeding it power. And he said that a lot of people who started putting these smart meters in their homes have been having issues, but he was, and I told him, can you please send me like something in writing? And he was like, okay, I can have it mailed. I'm like, no, sir, just like show, send me a picture of a ticket, something that you, you know, proof that you did this, you fixed the problem. So he wrote up a little something for me, send me a picture. He was so sweet. I sent that to PSE and I sent that to Airbnb, called them up and they were able to then give me my $90 back that they took from me, right? Okay. And then now I'm in Mexico. These things always happen when I'm out of the country and I like, I'm not really tuned in, but I'm tuned in a little bit. So now I'm in Mexico a few weeks ago and someone booked the pink unit. They booked the pink unit to come in like the very next day. And as soon as he booked it, because as I was doing my walkthrough, I discovered that my oven, no, not actually, I wasn't doing a walkthrough. My cleaner, when she went to do the last deep clean before we started taking gas, she tried to boil water on the stove. And that's when she realized, she's like, hey, the light's turning on here, but there's no gas coming out of this oven. So I don't know what's going on. And I'm in Mexico. So I knew that I couldn't accept any, um, I knew I couldn't accept any uh, reservations. So I blocked the whole week. And then for some reason, that Saturday, Sunday, I guess like I needed more time because I came back from Africa, from Mali. I only had a week to get me and my kids ready, my husband ready to pack up, unpack, pack up, and then we went to Mexico for a week. So I didn't have really much time and I was dealing with that electricity situation. So I didn't have much time to hire someone to go fix the gas situation. So I was like, in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna deal with this when I come back, let me just block the calendar. I forget to block that weekend, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So um, someone books it and I immediately message them hi, uh, this property is not ready to be booked yet. Um, some things are not ready yet. So can you please cancel your reservation? You know, I'm sorry about the inconvenience. And like, usually when someone, people book, they usually, they message you. They, you know, they, you guys are going back and forth. Crickets, he's not messaging me. Two hours, three hours go by. He's not messaging me. I call PSCNG while I'm in Mexico. And I'm like, someone just booked my reservation. Uh, my, my property, property's not ready. There, there's a problem with the oven. They're staying for three nights. They're most likely nine times out of 10 probably gonna use the oven. And I don't want to be in a situation where I'm now refunding a guest some money because they're complaining that they can't cook. They can't make breakfast. Because at the end of the day, it's not ready if you can't even use the stove. Some people come and go and don't touch anything in the kitchen but some people come and they want to make breakfast and stuff like that and i don't want to be having those conversations while i'm on vacation okay so i call them and i'm like can you please cancel it i'm messaging the guest you can check our thread i messaged him three four times he's not responding at all so they go ahead they cancel it then a few days later i see they're charging me 200 dollars uh, airbnb so i call airbnb again i'm like why are you about to take 200 dollars out of a reservation you know that money that's about to come come to me like a payout that has nothing to do with this other reservation that we canceled. And we literally canceled it hours after he booked it. So it's not like a situation where he booked it weeks ago and he had all these plans. And then the guy, he was unresponsive, did not respond to me not once the entire time. So they're like, oh, well, you need to provide proof. And I'm like, I'm out of the country, okay? I am in Mexico. I'm not about to be dealing with this right now. When I get back to the United States, I'm going to have to hire someone to go tell me what's wrong with the oven. It's a brand new oven, literally out of the box. I don't know what's wrong with it. I can't deal with this right now. So she's like, okay, we'll give you, um, you know, a few days to do this. You have a deadline. So I come back. 
I give them a call and I'm like, okay, I have someone coming out. They're coming out the following week. And she's like, well, we already gave you more than enough time. So we can't refund you because the, the, we gave you seven days and that's more than enough time. Now I come back from Mexico. It's back to school now. We literally came back two days before back to school. So I'm getting my kids hair done. I'm getting my son's haircut, back to school shopping. <laughs> like I'm busy. I don't have time for this. Um, it's like, I'm taking vacation so that I can not stress. And y'all stressing me out while I'm on vacation. I and it's like, I'm not, what, what do I have to lie for? The first situation was there's no electricity. I provided the proof. Now they, I don't have no proof to provide you because the oven's not working. I can show you the oven not working, but they want, what they wanted from me that I didn't have was, um, the person that fixed it and the company that's going to fix it. And, um, the, and then like explaining what was wrong with the oven. And I'm like, I haven't hired anyone yet. It's back to school. I'm busy, whatever, whatever. Like, can you guys give me more time? No, we're not giving you no more time. We gave you more than enough time. So in the span of seven days, they, they gave me like three days to provide the information. I called them. They was like, okay, we're going to extend it to seven days, which is four more days. These people took $200 out of my pocket. I felt like that was so wrong. Like I'm, I'm giving my home to someone to use on a vacation, giving, opening my home to, to these people. We have bills. I have my bills. I have all these things that I'm working on and I'm still providing a quality product. I could have just let the guy book it. To be honest, I could have just let him book it. And then, you know, if that's the kind of host that they want, I feel like you guys should hear the host out and there should be certain scenarios where you're strict and certain scenarios where you're a little bit more lenient. A host like myself, who's been a host over two years, I now have three properties listed on this platform. I've never canceled in those three years. The other situation, I was able to provide proof and then this happens. I feel like there should be, okay, well, this is your one-time waiver. Well, you have a, a waiver that you can use per year. It was none of that. So I put a really bad taste in my mouth very disgusted, very upset, literally just took $200 out of a totally different reservation for a totally different property for a guest that came and stayed for the weekend. And then when that payout was supposed to come, they just deducted $200. I feel like that's like stealing at this point. So just wanted to let you guys know, like if there's an, ever a situation where um, a guest has to cancel, you have to cancel, make sure you have the proof because these people are playing games. And it's like, it's not really fair. And I, I'm on an um, Airbnb host group on Facebook and I listen to other hosts complain about things that Airbnb do. And I'm starting to see it more and more and more that it's not really in the favor of the host and it's putting a bad taste in my mouth. And I saw something the other day where the CEO was just like, you know, they're in trouble because a lot of hosts are complaining about decline and um, a big decline in reservations and just, you know, money in general. A lot of Airbnb hosts, like my cleaner told me a lot of Airbnb hosts are just giving up on Airbnb, selling their furniture, you know, selling the house. I mean, they're not making as much money. We're not making as much money as we made in 2020 when this was, you know, when it first started and it was really popping, popping. It didn't start in 2020, but 2020 was the year where people couldn't really travel. So people were booking houses on the beach and, you know, getting away with their family or booking Airbnbs just to get out of the city where it was very populated and people were scared. So I don't know if the company is in, de in a decline right now, but that put a really bad taste in my mouth and I didn't like that at all. Um, I feel like that wasn't fair at all. I feel like we need to be fair. And in the past they've been fair, but it's like the alternative would to be leave the reservation, let the guests come. If they don't use the oven, fine, but if they need the oven and then that's when I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with the oven. And then I could choose not to give them anything at all. And then Airbnb will say, you know what? Since this problem has occurred, we're going to give the, the guests 10% back of their reservation. That's what they would have did. They would have gave them 10%. So why would you refund the guests 10% but then take a whole $200? That's way more than 10% of the reservation. I think their reservation was going to be like 600 bucks or 500 bucks, And you had to go ahead and take $200. That's BS. No, but just be very careful with any reservations that you guys have to cancel. And another thing that really pissed me off was this was an instant book. The guest wasn't even communicating with me. So this money didn't go to the guest. This money went to Airbnb. So I feel like they robbed me. And tell me, you know, what you guys think in the comment section down below. But I feel like it's a bunch of bullshit. I just feel like Airbnb wouldn't be Airbnb without hosts providing luxurious stays, providing stays, providing rooms, providing their homes, period. It's a platform that we use, but at the end of the day, we're the ones providing our home. We're the one taking the majority of the risk. So we shouldn't be treated that way. And it was just put a really bad taste in my mouth. So tell me what you think down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching my video. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. Obviously it's been a few months now, but I'm still pissed off. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.